Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 2.1 Naming. We're going to learn how to name ionic compounds. We're going to learn what Roman metals are. We're going to learn about reducing. We're going to learn about polyatomic ions, molecular ions, naming acids, and then I'm going to add on here hydrates. So hopefully we'll turn on right through that. Charge in the periodic table. And we talked a little bit about this in class. Um, plus one, plus two, plus three, zero, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero. Now there are a couple of things that are odd on here. Aluminum is always plus three, which makes perfect sense. Zinc is right here. Zinc is always plus two. And silver is always plus one. So you need to know those guys are a little bit odd for those charges. And those charges will always be true for a while. Ionic compounds. Ionic compounds start with a metal. Oh, which ones are metal, you ask? Um, most periodic tables, excluding this one, have a little stair step that shows you metals from nonmetals. The metals, now you know iron is a metal. So everything on the left of that stair step is a metal, except hydrogen. And everything on the right of the stair step is a non-metal. These guys, if you notice, is 55, 56, I'm sorry, 56, 57, and then here's the 58. These guys are over here, so they're metals. And then anybody that I'm shading in right here is not a, a metal nor a non-metal. It's a semi-metal or a metalloid. Okay, so those are semi-metals that I shaded. So ionic compounds always start with a metal, so something on the left, and they always have a positive charge. They form networks, not molecules, so they look like this. Binary ionics, so you're going to crisscross. So there are some Roman metals. Oh, so let's hop back to here. These guys right here, we don't know their charge. That is the Roman region of the periodic table because you need a Roman numeral to identify their charge. Numeral, there you go. And you need to cancel some of the charges. So let's take a look at this. So like the Romans, see how this is a Roman numeral? That tells me copper is plus two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write barium. And from the periodic table, I'm not going to keep flipping back here, but just I trust you guys to look and to believe me when I tell you. So you better have your periodic table out. Oop, it's not going to go back there. Barium is right here. So barium is plus two. I should have a little periodic table here. So barium is plus two. Chloride is in the minus one column. So I want to balance these charges. So I would have two chlorides. That would be Ba. Cl2. Do you see how this 2 went down here and this 1 went down there? They crisscrossed. Copper 2 nitride. Copper is plus 2. Nitride is N minus 3. And it ends in I is negative, and it's just the number from the periodic table. So I crisscross. Makes you want to jump, jump. The Daddy Mac will make you jump, jump. Uh huh, uh huh. Cu3, N2. So notice copper 2 will not have two coppers. That 2 will usually be on the other side. Magnesium oxide, magnesium is plus 2. Oxide is minus 2. So those equal each other. Remember, we're not crisscrossing a crisscross. We crisscross to balance the charges. So we have MgO. Oh. Ternary ionics. Don't worry so much about the name. It just means you have three or more atoms. Still crisscross. Watch your subscripts and know your ions. Calcium is plus 2. And the first day of school, I gave you a list on the back of our um, schedule that has the list. The ions need to memorize. Acetate, oh yeah, C2, H3, O2, negative 1. Now when I crisscross this, I do not have Ca, C2, H3, O, 22. I have two acetates. So that 2 means I have two acetates. So that goes, this one goes in parentheses, and the 2 goes outside. Iron 3 nitrate. Iron 3 means iron is plus 3. It's a Roman numeral. Nitrate, I had to memorize nitrate, NO3 negative. So I have Fe, crisscross, right? 1, NO3, taken thrice. Woo! To go backwards with it, if I have iron phosphate, I don't know the charge on iron, so I need to know, I know it's iron, but I don't know the charge because it's a Roman metal. Now phosphate, because I memorized it, is minus 3. So I know that minus 3 for phosphate must cancel with 1 iron. So it must be iron 3 phosphate. And those ions are on, they're given to you the first day of school. So find those and refer to them for a while. Binary molecular, they start with a nonmetal, which shows you where those were on the periodic table. Remember the stair step? They're the ones over here. You name them with prefixes. 
And they make molecules, not networks, so they have a definite starting and stopping point. Nitrogen is nitrogen. I have two oxygens, dioxide. Carbon, C. Tetrachloride, chlorine is Cl. Tetra means four. So do I give you that? No, I've got to give you all the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eights. Mono, it's for the second one only. You don't put mono on the first one. Di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, and deca. And that's one through ten. You only use mono in the second one. The other trick is there are no um, double O's. So CO is carbon monoxide, not carbon monoxide. Okay. Hello, I'm an acid. Acids always start with an H for us. Okay. Acids are ionically bonded, but it is not a network. So if I have eight, like if I have nitrate, eight becomes ick. So you can remember ick, I ate it. So nitrate becomes nitric acid. So nitrate is NO3, negative one. So nitric acid would be HNO3. NO3 is negative one, hydrogen is plus one, charge is good. Ite. Like nitrite. Nitrite is NO2 negative. Ite. I remember this like itis. Like people have, um, like, oh, I don't know. Matt has gingivitis. That means his gums are swollen. So ite us. So that becomes nitrous acid. And since it's still negative 1, it would be HNO2. Ide. So if I have sulfide, which is S negative 2, then what happens, ide becomes hydro, so the stem is hydro ic acid, so it's hydro sulfuric acid, and the stems aren't as hard as you think. So you know ite us, ic, I ate it, hydro ic for ide. That'd be H2S. HClO2. ClO2 is chlorite. So that means it us. So it is chlorous acid. SO4, negative 2 is sulfate. Ick, I ate it. Stem for sulfur is sulfuric acid. Hydro, bromic acid. I hear the hydro. So that means it comes from bromide. If it ends in ide, it's just your charge from the periodic table. The ide would be just your charge from the periodic table. Hydrobromic acid is HBr. Ding! Hydrates. Loosely bonded water to an ionic compound. It is a network with one ionic compound surrounded by more than bonded and surrounded by bonded and surrounded by water molecules. So it's a new compound. New compound, not a mixture. New properties. Okay. To name it, you would name this part CuSO4. Cu is copper. Copper is Roman, so it's something. SO4 is sulfate. Now, sulfate, because I memorized my ions, is SO4 minus 2. So copper, one copper has to balance a minus 2, so it's copper 2 sulfate. Prefix for 6 is hexa hydrate. Okay, I wrote like I'm in second grade. MgCO3. Magnesium is magnesium, is Mg. CO3 is carbonate. And then, th that's not Roman, that's why I didn't have to worry about the charge. And then 3 is trihydrate. Aluminum, sulfate, tetrahydrate. Aluminum, charge is plus 3. Sulfate, I've memorized that. So that would be AL crisscross makes you want to jump, jump. Daddy Mac will make you jump, jump. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Tetrahydrate dot 4H2O. 
Woohoo! The names are systems we must learn. First, identify the type of atom it is, and that ID is the type of compound. And know your ions, and that's probably the hardest part. And you should know that crisscross makes you want to jump, jump. Jump, jump. Jump, jump. Toodles, toodles. Toodles, toodles.